Hi, Bob Ross here. Awesome. Bob, you're looking amazing. Right? <laughs> well, welcome. How's it going today? It is excellent, you know? I am loving this quarantine, you know? I, I know there's tragedy all around us, but for a guy who's been on the road for 30 years to finally, you know, just stay home with endless amounts of time is just a phenomenally weird thing and wonderful thing. You know, I've been painting for the first time in 15 years. Amazing. You know, I'm loving it. That's awesome, I, yeah. I mean, I even started a mural on my back gate, man, my back fence, you know, and I, I, I'm just like, ah! <laughs> 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 I'm Bring it all on, more happy trees. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, I'm glad you said it because I felt guilty saying the same thing to Kelly. I've been a lot of times been like, I'm enjoying the hell out of this right now. So <laughs> it's like you feel guilty for all the people that are having a really shitty situation. But for those of us that are healthy, like, yeah, mm, and are staying at home. Yeah. So yeah. we don't create more of a bad situation for the people out there in the front lines dealing with the medical end of this, you know. <laughs> No, that's yeah. just what I was saying today. I'm like, yeah, I miss the heck out of all of you. I can't wait to go see live music, and I can't wait to dance and to hug everyone. But when I hear stories about my friends that can't fly home to visit their parents that are sick, or you see the picture of the people standing outside of the windows looking at their parents in a nursing home and they can't go in, I'm just going to stay yeah. at home right now. <laughs> and there's a lot of fun to be had here at home, you know? There is. You know, it, yeah. it cost me, uh, I think, about you know, 150 bucks to uh, go get a couple canvases and enough acrylic paints and brushes to get at it again, man. And I have just been having endless fun. Fantastic. So uh, have you been sitting outside to, to do this? Is this, you know, you, are you out in a field somewhere painting this? No, this is, this is my indoor one. I've got a, uh, a mural going on my, uh, on my back gate that's, what you would see if uh, the gate wasn't there and none of the buildings in Boulder were there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see the, the the background of the mountains, you know, just above, just above my fence. And so I, I made the mural. So if you're sitting in, in this one specific chair I like to sit in, <laughs> the background where there's a hole in the fence, <laughs> the hill lines up with the mural. Oh, you know, so, oh nice. You know. I just figure, you know, if, if I can't have a big old farm to live on, and since I moved to the cut to town, I'm just going to paint one. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm curious about is this done from memory then, or did you take a photograph and you're painting from that, or is just no? This is uh, yeah, memory. I I've lived in Boulder a long time. I've seen these flat irons. I don't think I got them. I actually drove up to Chautauqua the other day to take a look at them. I didn't get them anywhere close to the shape. <laughs> but, you know, the painting is certainly nowhere near done, so. I knew exactly what it was. Right. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> I think you crushed it. Right, well, I mean, whether or not I could actually pick out the flat irons out of a lineup and be like, tell you which yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> that was the guy. <laughs> yeah. We used to complain all the time, like, when, when the Tetons would want to get on the guest list when we were playing up in Jackson Hole, you know, <laughs> If a mountain wants to get on the guest list, there's no room for anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> that you know, that's, true, that's been a problem. And how are you going to say no to a mountain? You can't. You can't say no to a mountain. They're bigger than you. All right. No. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. That's the beautiful thing about it, man. You know? Perfect. But, you know, I, I, you know music you know, is, is my career and what I'd love to do. But my second favorite thing to do is to look at stuff. <laughs> and, you know, I do it all the time. And, you know, I bet you do, too. I, I look at lots of things. Yeah. Yeah, see? It's been a fair it's really popular. of things. Yeah, look at this shit's getting really popular. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, so that, that's, why I, that's why I like to paint, you know? <laughs> If, if you had to give up one of your senses, which one would it be? Ooh. Well, it wouldn't be Durban, man, because that's one of my favorite kinds of scents, uh, you know? Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> um, what kind of, boy, that's. Do you have a specific legal issue regarding intellectual? Probably smell. Yeah. But then, but then, then yeah, but then, how does losing your sense of smell affect your, your sense of taste, though? I mean. I think it does, yeah. And it's, then it's, like, it's also dangerous, I think. Like, what if your house is on fire or something? True. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, at least you can find your way out. I mean, you're not blind. That's true. Also, you know? true. yeah. You, you can hear uh, it if an alarm goes off. Right. You, got, you do have some backup yeah. senses. That's good. <laughs> oh, man. Hearing. Hearing is definitely not. On a, I mean, I've lost some of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, from, <laughs> from my time in rock and roll. But, um, man, hearing. I, I, I would think that would be definitely one of the toughest. I agree. You know, just because I, you know, my world has been so much about you know, you responding and, and creating sounds, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's right up there looking at stuff, uh, you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> Are you good at um, wearing earplugs when you're not on stage, when you're in the crowd? Are you good at protecting yourself or? What? Are you good at protecting your hearing? When you <laughs> 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 Got me. Uh, no, I'm not. I don't, and I don't use in ear monitors. I can't stand in ear monitors. It makes me. It makes me all self conscious. It's really weird. Yeah. I like go go all internal, and and you don't want to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> not on stage for crying out loud. You know. I mean? You know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what's in my mind well actually i guess you do i do tend to, to kind of spill it a little you know? bit you give you give us bits and pieces i think but uh <laughs> yeah yeah oh. Not exactly. way more than any, way more than any proper southern gentleman would let on in a public situation all right <laughs> <laughs> now, how this cloud's coming along yeah. Well, you know, it, I, I just do random things, and if it doesn't work out, I paint over them. Yeah. Um, well, and it's it, bolder weather, man. I mean, it's going to change quickly. Yeah. 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 I, I probably should go outside and consult some cloudings. <laughs> yeah, you know, but you know, I've looked at clouds for a while. Yeah. I've looked at clouds from both sides now, from up and down, still somehow, from clouds illusions, I recall. I really don't know clouds at all. Was that a, was that a little Yates? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Seuss, maybe? <laughs> no, man, Judy Collins. Nice. Uh, well, I, I, and, uh, well, actually, is it a, no, it's a Joni Mitchell song. Okay. Both sides now? Gotcha. Right. Yeah, you got to check it out. I think Joni uh, plays it on um, Lap Dulcimer. Oh, yeah? Which is kind of wild to see your play, yeah? Nice. Well, we have plenty yeah. of time to check that out, so we'll be sure. To yeah. Hey, I'm pretty sure we got some Joni albums around here. We can see what so. it has on so. there, yeah. <laughs> Maybe Creative pursuits are so important during this time, man. You know, it's very important to uh, to go out and figure shit to do, you know? I, I mean, go in and figure shit to do, uh, you know? Yeah, it doesn't involve going out. What am I saying? Yeah, I, it, it really bothers me that people are, are getting back to it. I realize some people really need to get to work and all that, you know, and hopefully they can do it safely, man. But just this whole idea, let's get back at it. I know, let's go stand with a bunch of guns in the lobby of the state capitol and protest it. Man, a bunch of hippies showed up in there with guns? Jesus. I'm not really, I'm having a lot of time struggling or a hard time just figuring out what that is accomplishing. Because 
I mean, we all want the same thing, right? Like none of us want this virus here. It's out of our control. And we're all just trying to make it go away as quickly as possible so things can get back to normal. And for some reason they think they're on like a different page than us. <laughs> like, I don't really get it. <laughs> like, show hey, you. It's just really weird because it's supposed to be the hippie's job to fight the man, right? Right. Yeah. You know, now you got these conservative cats out there fighting the man. Yeah. No, but it has it has <laughs> flipped. It is crazy. It's like, yeah, now it's like I've always been anti-government, like the hippie soul inside of me. Now it's yeah. like, all right, now the now the gun tote in right wing, they're the anti-government people, and we're the voice of reason. What the hell? <laughs> you know, the same thing. It, uh, this turnaround happened in the coal industry. You know, you know, my my grandfather, and my father were proud union members, man. You know doing that stuff and then you know in the you know the turn of the millennium you know by that time the coal fields in west virginia all the unions were gone you know and people were fighting for you know what few remaining jobs were there and their loyalty was not to the union all of a sudden it was to the company and the union was the bad guys how that change happened, I don't know. But I think it's a similar thing with this stay at home thing. You know, it's it's somehow our allegiances have been bought and sold. You know? And I don't like it. It makes you think. Well, I mean, I always say the biggest trick that the the far right did was convince people that the middle was the left. And then it just right. flipped it all on its head. <laughs> exactly yeah exactly just yeah move the pendulum right yeah whether it's a lie whether it's absolute bullshit just keep the pendulum moving and and it's the same thing you know i mean who's who's to say russian bots aren't behind you know getting people out in the streets and demanding their freedom hell yeah Putin would love for us to all get sick and die right you know yeah, there's been an interesting lack of news on what how this virus is is actually attacking Russia, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, there I, I, I haven't updates. heard much out of there. I, I well, think, yeah, the nature of the of the beast is not to hear much from it, right? <laughs> and if we do hear about it, it's through the lens of some bullshit, you know, or with some Cold War lingering motivations or something, you know. I, I don't know. Man, I don't know. Miss the good old days when uh, the biggest fears out of Russia were that they were gonna, you know, beat us at hockey and 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 kick Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh lordy. I, I, I grew up with uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. <laughs> you know those? Oh, yeah. Boris Badnov. Boris Badnov was the bad guy. And Natasha. You know Natasha. Uh, the Russians were the bad guys. Rocket J Squirrel, he fixed this. Rocket J Squirrel, he go after the Boris Bedinov. <laughs> but now no more Boris Bedinov. <laughs> that was my Saturday but morning. We have some, some happy mountains <laughs> and some happy clouds. Now, see, the key to a good creative day is to not overdo it, you know? I, I changed the clouds a little bit. I'm gonna let that sit. And now I'm gonna show you how to make some Cajun chicken. There's the, uh, that, that might be the, the face of the psychedelic chef now. Oh. You know about the psychedelic chef? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Have you been to the psychedelic chef page on, on Facebook and all that? It's we been have. a while, are you updating it? Is it getting updated? You know, I, I'm thinking about, about that. You know, of course, uh, Silas is my main uh, compadre in the uh, Psychedelic Chef, and we've been distancing, so we can't really, uh, you know, get at it in the way the true Psychedelic Chef should. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, so, yeah, I might have to solo Psychedelic Chef. Yeah. I mean, we've started a little thing called our Corona Kitchen, and we do a little bit of cooking on our Corona Kitchen, so you could certainly be a guest on that as well. Yeah. All right, then. 
Okay. Perfect. So what we got, what we got going on here <laughs> is uh, we, we got chicken. And I'm gonna spice it up. The key to chicken for me is the secret ingredient, pure filet gumbo, ground sassafras leaves. Mm -hmm. Got to put it on low and slow. This cage of chicken. Once it's once it's uh, seasoned up, I'm gonna take this tomato cage. Yeah. After the marinade sitting in there, I'm gonna put the cage around the chicken. This makes it Cajun chicken. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you working on that one? <laughs> I am. Uh, <laughs> it, it just happened to be sitting there. Uh, and uh, yeah. And then a little bit of Louisiana Cajun seasoning. Put a little, you know, got a little hot pepper and stuff like that in there. But this is the key. This gumbo, oh man. If you cook anything low and slow and you put sassafras leaves on it, it is out of control good. It's just ridiculous. And of course, we'll have to check back in later when it's time to get out of the oven. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in at about 250 degrees. So you get this, you get this paste here, this oily, herbal like just mm, yeah. goodness man just coat this bad boy in it where'd you get your chicken uh this is the whole foods chicken uh i braved the whole foods the other day i uh being you know being a prematurely gray uh guy uh i was able to go early in the morning with the old people <laughs> Before nice. the place got too crowded, how was yeah. that? I did my early morning job. You know, I've, I've been, I've been, I was in the house for five weeks before I went out and did any shopping or anything. Wow. Um, and, and then, then Silas did a did a, a, a shopping run for me. I'm really happy. I know how to cook because you know, I, you know, I, I, I can buy like big ass cuts of meat and. You know, roast them up and do all that stuff, and bag them up, and freeze them. And, you know, so I've been, I've been making like you know, kind of like big meals, freezing them up, thawing them out. You know, and, and you know, using things before it, 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 they rot. You know, which is something I think we need to get at because we're going to be doing this for another year, folks. Yeah, I think. Hate to tell you. It's we going did. to be a long time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Be before musicians, anyways, can get back to it. You know. What, what, do, you think, other, what do you think? Other you occupations. Think? Other occupations are going to be all right getting back to work, but but not us. No. You know. I, yeah, I, I, I'm afraid you might be right. We were. What, what do you think? What do you think music music festivals are going to look like when we get back to them? Like. Um. You know, uh, they're what they're not going to happen, or I I think shouldn't happen, until we have the five minute test everywhere. Yeah. You know, and you go into the, the festival, you get test. Yeah. You know, you're going over to see friends. You're going to have a party at a friend's house. Everybody test before they come in the door. I mean, it's it's horribly intrusive and all that stuff, but you know, it beats the black death. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, we, we've got we're going to have to change our worlds, man. We've you know, seen some yeah. uh, some other countries. They've had some festivals or some concerts where everybody should been in their cars, like a drive-in movie. What do you think? Drive-in thing. Yeah, I I like the drive-in idea. Yeah, I like you know? it too, but as Kelly said, like if you don't have a pickup truck, like you can't really dance, but you could still at least be there, I suppose. Yeah, yeah that, another reason to buy one of them sprinters. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. This is a chicken. Like a, how's that going? 
Oh, you're good. There you go. <laughs> Is that just a close-up shot? <laughs> How many pounds? Yeah, that that, that, just to get a close-up shot. Good. And uh, unfortunately, I guess that, that, that I'm finding out that as you turn it over, it all sticks to the pan. So I'm just going to put that on there. And, uh, the cage on. We got some good cage on seasoning in there. <laughs> Regular Paul yeah, Pernod over here. <laughs> All right. Cage and chicken. We're going to let this sit for about an hour and then uh, come on back to you here on the Psychedelic Chef. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Looks amazing. How do you like that? That's good. That's great. Yeah. That's pretty good like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Lovely. So uh, after cooking and painting, I like to relax a little bit, wind up the old Victrola. And, uh, you know, you've been here. Yeah. You know the glory of the Victrola. Love it. Yeah, you know? I'm obsessed with it. I love it. Yeah. Heck yeah. Spent the whole time I was at your house just dancing in front of that thing. No offense to all the guests. <laughs> yeah. I could tell you were kind of wound up. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Woo! What do you what do you spin it? Who'd you put on there? Uh Sign on Harvest Moon. I think that was that melody. Uh it's an RCA Victor record. Record, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. Let's see who it is. It's a uh, Shannon Harvestman Fox Truck. Tommy Dorsey. All right. Yeah, man. Tommy Dorsey spent some time in Colorado with uh, with Glenn Miller, and and uh, Glenn Miller had a cabin up in Eldora. Oh, yeah. And 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 like would hang there with uh, with a bunch of the uh, faculty from the music school back in the forties and stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Woohoo! So so the much. Town's got a lot of history. So much Boulder music history. Yeah. So this is like the, the antique version of the Frasco dance shit show party. Right. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Be the next pick. Do, do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of my take on that kind of stuff, man. I like the old stuff. What can I say? So what's happening going over there in Festy Go Nuts lands, man? We've been very isolated too. I mean, but then yeah. I don't know. I mean, we live in a neighborhood. I go running, we go for walks, and it's like you see people, half of them are doing it well, half of them aren't, and you're like, I feel like we're doing so much. I know you're doing so much to be careful. And then you just wonder how much it matters if everyone's not doing it. I mean, I guess I'd stay optimistic, but it's... Well, know. as my mother used to say, just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean you have to. I if know. they jumped off a bridge, would you? I know. Yeah, I know. If so, everyone did, maybe. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I guess if everybody jumped off the bridge, I mean. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, you know, we just got to do our part because it does make a difference for sure. The less yeah. that we can, the less we're that out there spreading it, then you just don't know. You got to assume, right? Yeah. Got to make right. assumptions. That's all. Yeah. 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 You know, and boy, it's, 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 it's tough. There's some serious management questions. We're gonna have to figure it out because, like I said, we're gonna be in this for a long time. We've all lived through 9/11. You're a couple years older than me. I mean, we've lived through some crazy shit. Has anything compared to this? No. No. I my uh, in my hometown, there's a uh, a big unmarked section of a, of the cemetery that uh, that my father told me where. I Actually, a mass grave from the 1918 flu epidemic, and yeah, that, I didn't know anything about you know that. I had no idea that this epidemic came through and wiped out that many people, so that they were having to bury them in trenches and unmarked graves. Right. That was that was a hundred years ago. Yeah, you know, I was thinking yeah, about that. We're, not, we're talking about that a lot now, and I'm like, I don't remember learning anything about that in school. I mean. 
the, how many people were killed by that, and it was just kind of glossed over in the history books, it seems yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, the uh, um, you know, the Spanish flu, you know, it was the end of World War One, and people came, all came, there was, there was like this first wave, and things got a little bit better than World War One ended, and everybody went out to the streets to celebrate, and everybody, everybody died. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like a tenth of the u.s population died yeah that's crazy it was freaking massive you know so let's not all go out in the streets and celebrate the end of world war one <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. we need to just stay home reconnect with ourselves and our others significant others you know and but and i think a lot of people were on that page for a while and it's it was like fun and new and everyone was doing it and then the second they were like, maybe we can lift it up a little bit. Everyone's like, we're going outside. And like, yeah. wait, that's all right. All of a sudden we're like, okay, slowly, slowly. Yeah. But how do you slow down this society? That's the problem. I myself, I didn't, you know, I've been, I've been running frantically for, for years, you know, and was really feeling like, man, I better figure out how to slow down. You know, I ain't getting no younger. And, you know, it was, it was becoming really wearing, you know, and, and not wearing well, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm really, really have much gratitude for this, this forced pause. Hypothetical for you. So we're back to normal, safely, assuredly. Like, yeah. yeah. What's the first thing you do? I'd like to say that that is absolutely true, and everybody should go to the Trump rally tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> nipping away at the voter, nipping away at his base. Um, you know, elections are only one or two percent, man. Let's let's organize some Trump rallies. <laughs> oh, love that. <laughs> uh, mm. Well, it's less drastic. I mean, I, I mean. You know, the, the filth and garbage that comes out of his mouth, I guess I don't feel all that bad saying something like that. Yeah, I'm sarcastic. I would never wish ill will on, on any of my fellow humans. But uh, Just one, maybe? This guy is a danger to the planet and ourselves. Yeah, I agree. I, I've said this many times before. Where are all the Jodie Foster fans when we need them most? And... <laughs> it just... <laughs> Like, what the hell? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I just, I just hope that, that we can educate ourselves uh, to uh, better possibilities, you know. I was born in, in 1962, and, you know, I, I guess I'm a child of the, uh, you know, the golden days of Kennedy and, you know, the great society and, all those sort of things, you know. And I don't know that it's possible for anybody to get into office and do anything great. Get anymore. anything done. Yeah. Not until like. Yes, it is. This is the freaking United States. <laughs> it is possible. I ain't giving up. Yeah. Hell no. I'm getting this asshole out of office. Yeah. And, you know, if it's down to running myself, man, I'll. Yeah, I mean, we all need to participate more, man. It, it is possible, man. Yeah. Vince for 2024. Uh, Herman 2020. Her Herman and Mayor McCheese 2024. Is that the ticket? There you go. That's it. Yeah. A couple quick questions from the fans we want we want to throw at you. All right. Question. You betcha. <laughs> question from Leslie. Was that really you in the lizard suit at the first vendor jamboree? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I was not in a, uh, a verbally um, cohesive state. <laughs> so I thought it might be best that nobody knew who I was. Right. And would engage me in conversation. So I, I, you know, I was kind of beyond words at that point. So as anyone should be in Vegas at a music festival. Yeah. 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 I, I, I was seeing my share of lizards at that point as well. Yeah. So you were blending. Yes. Right? <laughs> I was like, that. there was a real lizard? Right, that was real? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Uh, we got a question from Ryan. Uh, who put the pepper in the Vaseline? Um, the landlord. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, the landlord um, figured out that, you know, if their tenant is not going to pay the rent, they sneak in and put the pepper in the Vaseline. So if your rent has been deferred, if you put off paying your rent or your mortgage, don't use Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> Public service yeah. announcement. Yeah. It's a little spicy. And if you put off paying your mortgage and it's all due at the end of this thing and the bank seizes your property because of it, don't say I didn't warn you. Right? Yeah. The banks aren't in this to help us out. You know what they want. No, they're going to get it all. They want you to get in big trouble, man. So keep it going any way you can. Yeah. Good advice. Don't fall for that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, question from Michael Colon. What's one of your favorite memories from the town park campground for during the bluegrass festival in Telluride? Man. Tough question. Uh, well, I mean, many of them involve anawacking. Right. <laughs> and, What's your favorite uh, anawack then? Well, you know, there have been so many, but I've been recently thinking of the very first anawack. Uh, and it was my friend Carol Hartness. And she was sleeping at a time when we thought it wasn't really time to be sleeping. And we surrounded her tent and sang Christmas carols because her name was Carol. <laughs> How'd she do And uh, woke her up. She wasn't too psyched, so we ran away. And that <laughs> that set up the whole model for Anawaki. Oh, amazing. <laughs> and, and, you know, fast forward to, you know, several years later, like 30. Yeah, yeah, probably almost 30 years later. And uh, Anawacking reached its peak one night. Uh, my evil twin caused this. I wasn't anywhere near there. <laughs> um, but I uh, had about 100 people lined up on the fence of the ball field where people camp, mm -hmm. right kind of near Town Park there. We all very quietly went in snuck in through the other you know, batter's entrance there and went to the back of the thing lined up and on the given signal we went across the whole field not only anawak and yelling and all that stuff but occasionally <clears throat> collapsing tents <laughs> <laughs> oh no you made some friends that evening well his twin did oh uh, yeah your twin made some friends that yeah night. yeah <laughs> yeah uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no yeah. I mean, there have been so many great. I mean, it's I couldn't even begin. You know, the 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 early morning trips up the Bear Creek. You know that there was one where uh, we went up there in the morning after picking all night Saturday night. Mark Van, the first time we were we had met him at Telluride, we walked up to the waterfall like about eight miles up behind the back of the campground there, and uh, you know just sitting there just around sunrise and. And the, the sun's across the valley, you know, behind the mountain over there, just about to rise up, you know, back here. And uh, we're sitting over here. And, you know, you can feel the sun just coming up. And we finally stop laughing and it gets quiet for a minute. We're all waiting for that sun to come over. And Mark says, down in front <laughs> to the mountain across the valley. <laughs> that's when we decided that when Mark had to move to Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> classic. Uh, absolute classic. Awesome. Uh, okay. Thank you, folks. This is Vince Herman. Best to go nuts, man. I'm going nuts putting on some happy trees in here, man. And you should too. Have fun and go nuts. Love it. Vince, where can everyone watch you this week? If you are you gonna be live on Facebook? Yes indeed. Six o'clock mountain time on Tuesdays. I go live on live from the living room lounge and also on my Facebook page. Um you know, it might be on Instagram, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. But, uh, no. Check that out every Tuesday. Six o'clock mountain time. All right. Perfect. 
Yeah, and, and uh, people can maybe look forward for some psychedelic chef stuff coming out, some other yeah. freakiness. As long as I don't get confused and start painting the chicken. Okay. <laughs> That's psychedelic, right, man. Man. Chicken, just don't eat it. It's psychedelic. <laughs> uh well man thank you Vinny. this has been awesome really appreciate yeah. you catching up with us um you yeah, bet we've enjoyed chatting with you and hope we can do it again soon yeah, yeah. um we're we're always our around. schedule's pretty open so <laughs> yeah all right, all right. All right. <laughs> thanks vince you bet man love y'all love yeah, you you nice. festival festival, festival! <laughs> <laughs> See y'all.